Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Yellowstone Country Fly Fishing and Parks Fly Shop with my weekly fly tying video for uh, the 26th of November, I think. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is going to be a little schmutz fly uh, that I call a May Midge. And it's a very sparse uh, little, this is an 18 and that's about as big as I tie these, fly that's intended for use on flat water when there's fish rising sporadically to this and that, uh, often unclear what uh, what they're eating. And this is one that we typically use in the Lamar drainage, maybe on the Spring Creeks, maybe on the Yellowstone, uh, in flatter stretches in slower water where there's not a whole lot of chop. There's not a lot of hackle on this fly, and so it's not really suitable for really fast water. Um, but we get mixed hatches of midges and blue-winged olives, you know, a few here and there, and... Uh, Trichos, and you know, there's there's two or three of this, two or three of that, and this is the sort of fly that we use in those situations because it's it's small enough to not really spook the fish, and it can kind of look like a lot of different things. Okay, so my hook here, as I mentioned, is a size 18, and um, I'll tie this fly, you know, 16 to 22, but heavy emphasis on the 18s and 20s, and uh, this hook is a 1x short, 1x fine emerger hook. Uh, this one's actually a Komoto. Uh, if in case you're a user of Dairiki hooks, you probably know that they're going away or have gone away. And Komodo is actually tying or designing hooks that have the same uh, proportions as Dairiki. Uh, in fact, I think they bought, bought the factory or they, they bought the molds or something. And so that's that's what I'm switching over to instead of Dairiki. My body on this fly is going to be Vivas Body Quill, and the color there is wine. And so this is kind of the purplish you know, reddish purple version of this fly. Um, if you know me, you know I like purple mayflies. And this one's also got a hint of red to it uh, because of that wine color rather than more of a violet purple. And uh, so I think it can also be an ant even. Uh, but I'm, I didn't use any normal thread to start with here. I, I actually switched threads midway through the fly and I'm using this body quill to create both the abdomen and function as thread for the abdomen. Um, my tail on this fly is going to be gray sparkle merger yarn, and you could use midge gray, zelon, or antron, or what have you, as well. I just screwed that up. And so I, I what I did there, I didn't make a full thread base because I do want to keep this fly thin. That's kind of the hardest part here. And so I made just that, I pulled that material up on the far side of the hook there. I didn't actually even have to really make a turn of thread there. And then now I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping down the shank and touching turns. And you can see this material, um, the reason I'm using this uh, body quill for my thread here, you can see that, that that's going to create a plenty thick enough body with uh, kind of that shimmer to it and a little bit of segmentation although not a lot and uh, that's that's kind of exactly what I want there and then just you can maybe tell here but just the fact that I wrapped over the butt of the uh, the body quill to start that thread that was all the taper I need there because I you know I wrapped three or four turns back cut that tied in the other stuff for the tail and uh, that's kind of sufficient taper and then get up to about three eye widths from the eye there, maybe two and a half. And I'm just going to take two loose wraps forward onto the bear shank there. And then what I do here, this is how I secure this. I could whip finish this uh, body quill because I am going to switch threads here. But if I whip finished it, that's going to be a fairly unsightly bump because this, this stuff is pretty thick, uh, especially for the hook size here. So what I do instead there is I just took those couple loose wraps forward and then I'm going to come in with 80 wine uh, Montana Fly Company thread here, which unfortunately they stopped making, and so I'm going to have to switch over to probably Vivas. But uh, anyway, so 8 or even 10 0 um, wine thread is what I'm going to use on that. And I just wrapped back, you know, I started my thread and wrapped back over the body quill, and then just used that to secure the body quill, and then just trimmed it off there. And so that makes for a cleaner connection. Now, when I tie the wing on this fly, sometimes I just tie it, I mean, I don't think it really matters that much on this fly. When I first started tying this pattern, um, it's one of my creations here, when I first started tying this thing, I just tied it, you know, a post style wing like that, uh, you know, any, any sort of post style wing, like on a parachute atoms or what have you. But uh, I kind of switched over to tying them cripple style because 
number one, if it is a small mayfly cripple they're eating, that helps with that. But then number two, it is actually a little easier to tie cripple. And so your mileage may vary. You can certainly tie this wing just as a post if you like. And you do want to kind of be careful here in terms of the number of thread wraps you make. So if you notice there, I only did uh, just two turns to start with here. Uh, now I'm going to get my hackle, which is grizzly. And I use grizzly hackle on all colors of this fly. In fact, the body quill, the uh, second thread here, and then the dubbing I'm going to use for the uh, kind of thorax region of the fly are the only things I've changed. The uh, hackle, the tail, and the wing are all the same. And the wing there is uh, is white widow's web, and you can use, you know, whatever synthetic yarn you like. Um, and I trimmed that wing short there, just as I would on any cripple. And then while I'm waiting for, or while I'm getting ready to dub the uh, thorax on this fly, I'm going to come in and just dab that thread area with a uh, little super glue and that's going to secure the hackle, secure the wing, um, you know, just make things a little more durable. And then my thorax on this fly is going to be Montana Fly Company Ice Dub in UV Brown. And as you can see, that actually comes out looking more wine uh, than it does brown. In fact, it's, it's uh, the only real material on a fly that's popular up on the Missouri called the Grape Slushy, and so that should tell you the color. And I'm going to make that a very thin and fairly short noodle of dubbing. And then just one quick turn around my the butt of my hackle there, a couple turns forward, and then finish just behind the eye there. I actually used way too much dubbing. Okay, and then I don't wrap this hackle in touching turns. I want that dubbing to show through. And so I'm going to grab my hackle here, and then there's one turn, two turns, three turns, and that's it. A uh, very sparse hackle on this fly. And that's why um, it really isn't suitable for rough rotter use. It just it's gonna get pulled under too easily. Now you could tie this, you know, same basic style, delete the uh, the dubbing, or just add a ball of dub dubbing behind the hackle and then wrap the hackle more thickly if you like. But I, I want this this fly to be pretty sparse. So I'm there at the eye and I'm gonna go ahead now and whip finish. And then I'll cut my thread, and then I've got to perform a couple more surgeries on this fly. The first thing I'm going to do is grab that post, and I'm going to trim that just a hair longer than the hackle. And I always wait to trim my, my posts until I, until I tie the fly so that I can do that just right above the hackle like that. And I'm going to invert it, and I'm going to come, come in here, and I'm going to cut off even more of that hackle. And I'm going to trim the bottom probably about 120 degrees of that fly actually, basically right even with the dubbing, and so that, that dubbing should hopefully show through there. Um, but there you have it, that's a main image, and it's kind of a techy, you know, sparse, um, late summer, early fall, sort of midge, blooming olive, trico, uh, what have you, sort of attractive pattern that we use when we're Encountering, you know, small numbers of rising fish kind of in slow water. I'm not really sure what they're eating. Maybe they're eating a lot of different things. And that's a good bug for that. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.